This side Rahul Mohan here is a group chief executive officer of Treasury Consulting Group and also a venture capitalist. Why I am telling you good morning because this is 22nd March 2019 where in the morning at 2 a.m. I am shooting the video. And the purpose of shooting this video is to have a word about RBI buy swap, buy sell swap facility which they just introduced in the market. And I think it's uh, the first auction would be happening on 26 March 2019 with a trade date of 28 because Indian rupee is T plus 2. I would like to, as you will understand that, I am a very different kind of speaker and this video would tend to amount to minimum 20 minutes. So I would like to take few indemnification here. First of all, all those people, those who have a patriotic attitudes towards RBI should not watch the video because you will definitely not going to be like that video. And alternatively, if you are thinking that your future is in the safe hands, then think several times before listening this video. I would like to start the video with a statement which are generally given towards RBI like I remember in 2010. 12 November when I was in Eurofinance, I gave a statement that RBI is an obsolete institution that should be banned. And I think that statement which I gave in November 2012 in Eurofinance Mumbai was absolutely perfect and now on 22nd March 2019, I will give the statement that the money which you are spending on the RBI in terms of paying salaries is a waste. Because RBI is an institution which really do not know how exactly foreign exchange market works. The, the basically the, the basically I wanted to shoot this video much earlier, but you know that being a multinational company, we are uh, uh, we have so many divisions, so many verticals, so we are not generally not getting the time. So today in the night at 2 a.m. when the entire globe is sleeping, I am shooting this video only for you. Because then I would be a little busy for a few days. We had him for Singapore for another 50 days trip. And then so another two months I'm in Singapore now. And then come back to India. Now, one important thing which I have understood after listening to the so-called PDF, which I got to know from RBI website is that RBI can be defined as an institution who will not only lack the technical knowledge, but RBI should be defined as an institution who really do not want to learn about technical knowledge. It's a complete defunct institution that should have been scrapped as early as possible. Now you must have noticed that the video is absolutely, uh, this board is absolutely blank and I'm going to be sharing this video in a little, uh, in, I will let you know, uh, we are going to draw a diagram here and we are going to shoot this video. But before shooting this video, I would like to have few indemnification. I would like to have few points that I have noted in two pieces of paper, you can see that. Number one point is that, why are we having this as a buy sell swap? Can I have one intelligent person in the panel of Reserve Bank of India who is actually calling this as a buy sell swap, although this is not a buy sell swap, this is a sell buy swap. I don't want you to call the name of a bank and the bank and which bank he is working, but with few days ago, I had a chat on our WhatsApp group which is on Fort Exchange, which is an allied WhatsApp group, it is only on invitation note. So even if you are the head of institution for anybody, if you are not in our list, if you if we don't invite you, you cannot join that. He told me that three years my phone has fallen. Now we of course as the time it progress we will discuss about what exactly is the three year my phone and all, but I would like to correct you that even in the India in the banking domain and the people those who are working in the foreign exchange we have the bankers those who exactly do not know how the things work three year my for the time he gave the statement about the three year my for it suggests that i don't know how come he turned out to be the banking and how come the bank how come bank is able to have that level of person who do not know that my for in india is quoted till one year and after that you have irs the difference between the MIFOR and the IRS is that MIFOR is computed by IRS is quoted. I repeat, MIFOR, Mumbai Interbank Forward Offer Rate is quoted while the Indian, uh, sorry, while, uh, you know, the interest rate swaps IRS is being is quoted. There is a difference between quoted and, and, and computed. For MIFOR, we have the formula, but for IRS, we don't. And why are we discussing that pertaining to this swap which we are going to, to, which we are going to thinking? 
Another uh, thing I would like to say that why the minimum period has been kept for three years? Can I have one logical point why it has kept for three years? Why we not kept for for why we not kept this swap in a in a where we give the three options to the man? One is the bullet, bar ball, and ladder. Why three years? When Raghuram Rajan opened, the, you know, this swap is nothing but a kind of similar swap with Raghuram Rajan offered in 2019. But I definitely not think that the Raghuram Rajan deserved to be a central banker because he also did a lot of mistake in that FCN swap. And especially in the POS architecture, he created the liability on RBI and now he every second day he is giving a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, a uh, lot of gyan on, on, on the Google that this is how India should be running. When he was Reserve Bank of India, he forgot to take the cover position of that as well. So this swap is more or less similar to what Raghuram Rajan did, but there is a difference. This time, RBI has shut off the liability from his shoulders to the bank's shoulder. And I fail to understand that why any bank in this globe will take the liability is irrespective of knowing that if they do not even do it, they would be in a beneficial situation. So we already know that Indian banking system is currently in a mess. We are facing almost 30 lakhs some crores of non-performing assets. This is what Reserve Bank of India is saying and I strongly agree with the fact that Reserve Bank understate most of the figures. Since they understand most of the figure, I am strongly in, in, the, in the favor of the fact that it's more than 16 to 17 lakh crores. Considering that level of non-performing assets which you are having and today you did a test of 35,000 crores buy sell swap which anyways in your balance you refer this as a buy sell which is a durable liquidity management structure. I don't know who is an intelligent person who has gave RBI a permission to, to set this as a durable liquidity management structure. This is not durable liquidity management structure. You are doing to mitigate the frictional liability which is there at the end of the quarter due to tax demand. The only reason of that swap is the tax demand. I know there are many people who will go on the YouTube and they will press the button of the dislike but for whom? I wanted to ask a question that once you press the button of dislike, ask one question from you and answer me that how many YouTube videos do hold? You are the people who press dislike but you do not have even a single YouTube video because you have a patriotism in place and you really do not want to discuss in a technical context. You just have a have an image of RBI in your mind but you even do not know what exactly is the structure and how exactly the structure works. To be honest, but you do whatever you want to do. I really don't care about that, you know. Another biggest issue which we have is that RBI claims that this durable liquidity structure is 35,000 crores. But if I go with the last year figure provided by the SDFC bank, it suggests that in the last year of the similar quarter, because March, June, and the last quarters are basically the quarter end is a tax demand, especially. It suggests that the tax demand of the last year, basically March 2018, is tantamount to 2 lakh crores. So last year it was 2 lakh crores and this time we have made it as a 35,000 crores. I don't know who is an intelligent person who did suggest it that when the last year the liquidity deficit was 2 lakh crores and this time it is 35, they are taking the buy sell swap of 35,000 crores. Still we can term this as a durable liquidity management tool except RBI nobody can explain this at least I cannot explain this third important thing which I want to discuss is that why it cannot be resolved using repo window when RBI having the 7 and 14 day repo window with the banks why the 35,000 crores cannot be resolved with the repo window why there is a need to have a durable liquidity why there is a need to have a so called buy sell swap in place which tactfully is a sell buy swap but still if I go with the RBA balance why there is a need for buy sell swap in place when I can resolve this thing using a repo window what is something which which I cannot be done using open market operation and why do I need to create this swap is it a tent amount you are creating or is it something you are entering into foreign exchange market without understanding where are you entering my other point is that what exactly would be the impact this on the FX curve. There are many reports which we have in the public domain including DBS, HSBC, Yes Bank, 
one report we have of the Goldman Sachs also, but thankfully speaking, no report has confirmed as yet what would be the impact of that swap on the four structures, which is swap spreads, banks BMK benchmark spreads, OS option adjusted spreads, and Z spreads. I repeat, what would be the impact we have on the four spreads? Swap spread, the benchmark spread, OS, and Z spread. I don't know how many people are accustomed to Reuters or Bloomberg, how many people have Reuters and Bloomberg and how many people exactly know there are two curves of every currency that exists. You name the currency, GBP, Canadian Dollar, Aussie Dollar, New Zealand Dollar, Indian Rupee, Philippines Peso, Chinese Yuan, Pakistani Rupee, Nepali and you name any currency. One is the BMK curve which is the benchmark curve. How liquid and how deep is that benchmark curve that is said is subject to scrutiny because the US would have the deepest. GBP is the deepest, Euro is the deepest, but if I start expecting this on Indian rupee, then my apologies. Another curve which people do not know is known as a treasury curve, which is TRY curve. There are two curves which we have of every currency, benchmark curve and treasury curve. I know many people, those who are watching this video, still now even do not know what exactly is the benchmark curve, how exactly it looks like, what exactly is the difference between benchmark curve and the OIS curve. We are not yet deliberating that, but there is another curve which is there, which is over, uh, which is treasury curve, TRY curve. Treasury curve is a realistic presentation of the interest rate in that currency. So, if today I need to create a bond using zero coupon swap pricing, which is in our parlance, I need to see the treasury curve rather than the BMK curve. But I know there are many intelligent people, especially the bankers. I call them as an excellent bankers accidental bankers because they do not know how to see the treasury curve. Another thing which I want you to say that why the near lag is 28 March 2019 and why the far lag is 28 March 2022. It should be planned in such a way that the every year bank can pay the premium and take its money back. Why we head for bullet? If we wanted to go for bullet, then the premium, then the period has to be one year. One year is a suffice period. Why are we going for bullet? We should go for barbell and netter. Of course, even in the case of Raghu Ram Rajan swap, which he did, he did it for two periods. If you remember correctly, for three years and five years. He said that the minimum period is three years, however, the maximum is five years. This is little good thing that he did in the swap when he said that the, it's a kind of a barbell. So basically out of the total tenor is five years out of which he divided into two parts which is three and five. It's a kind of barbell. So minimum is three, maximum is five. But in this the maximum is three, where is the minimum? God knows. So this is something a very contentious point which we need to discuss with Reserve Bank of India but I doubt they really understand that. Last point, RBI is expecting that public sector banks to come and play the role in that. I give in writing that public sector banks will never come because they their balance sheets are already under a huge mess and they reach to a level when they really look for continuous funding from the government. Since they look for continuous funding from the government, they need money and how can you, how can you assume that the public sector banks can come with the foreign money which is the US dollars. India is already scarce a US dollar. We know that it's an election year without talking politics, who will win, who will lose, but foreign institutional investors is very cautious. They have not invested much in the last few years, especially in the last couple of years in India. India is facing a dollar scarce and expecting that public sector banks to come and take up the position is absolutely, it's just like dreaming in a day, to be honest. These are the few important points. To just summarize the point before moving further, I would like to say, I would like to ask why the period is three years. Why not we have a bullet, barbell, and the ladder structure? Why the liquidity deficit is assumed at 35,000 crore? However, last year, if the numbers of the HDFC Bank is right, it's closer to 200,000 crores. On the contrary, why we call this so called durable liquidity management when the same stuff could have been done using the repo window? Alternatively, what would be the impact on the benchmark curve and on the treasury curve? Every currency would maintain two curves. One is the benchmark curve, one is the treasury curve, which is the four impacts, which is swap spreads, benchmark spreads, OS, and Z spread. I don't know how many of are accustomed to Bloomberg, but if you visit to Bloomberg, you would, you, you would know that exactly these things, these things actually exist. But if you are expecting RBI to declare this in their PDF, I am sorry for that. 
Then why the near leg is 28 March 2019? It should be, okay, it might be 28 March 2019, but the other nearest could be 20, 21, 22, rather than then the far leg is 22. And why we expect that the public sector banks to come, although we need to appreciate that public sector banks, rather than public sector bank, foreign banks in India, especially banks like Chase, are in a very solid situation to come and take up that business. God knows why it has not been thought for. Now, with this, I will take your permission to draw a diagram here. We will go, we will draw this diagram systematically and we will discuss what are the mistakes of Reserve Bank of India. I am pretty sure the banker who has given this swap structure to Reserve Bank of India itself do not deserve to be a banker. I called him as an accident banker. This is how we go. So, this is a chart which I maintained in the flight, you know. Now, this is Reserve Bank of India. And Reserve Bank of India wanted dollars. And this is banks. You know, now what exactly is the scene is that banks would give dollars to Reserve Bank of India while Reserve Bank of India will give the Indian rupee rate to them at FBIL, which is the reference rate. So at an agreed reference rate, I hope you know that at 12.45 p.m. every day RBI publish a reference rate and that reference rate is something which is, uh, which is applicable for the non-deliverable forward contract. I have a deep indemnification in that. That is, RBI reference rate was devised for non-deliverable contract. If such kind of swaps are in place, we should be taking 5 with 5 p.m. IST closing rate. Reason is, today no one knows how exactly the computation of reference rate has been done. Although, theoretically speaking, there is a circular which is there on the RBI website, but practically speaking, nobody knows how this is done. Nobody saw it and nobody can claim who is watching this video or who do not watching this video can give in writing that how exactly this structure has been done. How exactly RBI reference rate has been computed. Nobody knows that. I spent 10 years and I wrote several ways to deserve back of India during my tenure. How exactly you computed. Every time I got an answer after a few months of the email that we computed, you refer this attached circular. But I asked the practical question, never be there is a no reply which would come. So converting dollar into the into RBI reference rate is a mistake. It should be computed at 5 p.m. IST rate of that day. Again, that is an interpretation issue whether it is a 5 p.m. rate, it should be the high of that day, it should be the low of that day, or we're going to have mid swap. So, example 5 p.m. closing is a bid also for ask. So, better is to take a mid swap. So, if I would be at the RPA position, I would have said that on 26 March, when the auction date would open, I would be giving you 5 p.m. IST bid swap, which means bid plus ask divided by 2. But God knows who suggested this to RBI. RBI, sorry, the banks will get this money from so called NRI. Now, from where Indian banks get US dollars? We know that Indian banks have very minimal operations outside, especially in the countries like Singapore, Hong Kong and all. Their presence is very limited. So, and majority of the foreign currency non resident business is in the hands of public sector concern. The reason being, foreign banks are not interested. Reason, it's a loss making business. It's not a profit making business. Ultimately, the money which you are getting is from non-resident Indians, those who are outside India and they are investing in India. So, this is the money which is FCNR, Foreign Currency Non-Resident Window. We already know that banks who are having foreign currency non-resident, they already are in losses. They are in a huge stress. The reason being due to the non-performing assets, the net interest margin capability of the banks have fallen at a considerable level. That is a different thing that the sold media or the paid media in India is not talking or talking it about. But the net interest margin capability of the Indian banks has reached to that level that now it is very difficult for them to sustain. And that is one of the reasons why the current government is looking for a huge, uh, current government is looking, looking for a consolidation. 
So taking the FCML money for the swap is not the right deal, but God knows who did suggest it to RBI. And anyways, apart from that, banks have no source of income. They do not have any 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 dollar income. They are not a foreign bank. And fourth, expecting this to be a public sector bank is a myth. Now, only one who would be playing the role it would be the foreign bank. Example: Chase India, City India, Standard Chartered India, Barclays India. HSBC India and multiple. They are the Indian subsidiaries of the foreign bank. Example: DBS India. They have the dollar income. Why they have the dollar income? They have the clients like DBS. We hold the client with the DBS. Our dollar come to DBS. They know they have the clients. They can take up that position. But do or do we operate the account in the public sector bank? Definitely not. That is one of the important reason. The source of dollar in the public sector bank is very limited. On the contrary, it is it is it is you know. Uh, in case of foreign bank, it is not. Then the question is that you know. Then the question is that the banks have asked to quote the premiums upfront in the auction. So 26 March 2019, when the auctions will happen, bank will quote the premium, of course, in a so-called red herring sealed letter to the RBI. Three-year premiums. To whom some intelligent banker mentioned this as a three-year my fault. He might be the only person because the formula for the MIFO is 1 plus LIBOR into 1 plus swap and plus premium. So let me quote that way. MIFO is quoted as 1 plus LIBOR into 1 plus swap and plus premium. We all know that LIBOR is not quoted after one year. So computing MIFO more than one year is practically not possible. After one year, we have one thing which is known as IRS interest rate swaps. But anyway, the biggest content here is that banks are asked to give in writing how much premium they would be paying to RBI after three years to get their dollar back. I would like to ask this from RBI. Why any bank will take that responsibility on his pocket? Why? Why would I give you premium? When the same thing can be resolved from the repo window, why I would give you premium? Sitting today, three year IRS, sorry, three year swap and rice premium is that amount to 7.75 rupees, approximately 8 rupees. This is a figure I got from Reuters. And everyone in the foreign exchange market is aware of the fact that when you talk about the, the any 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 swap annualized rate greater than one year, you know, if you take seven banks, Goldman Sachs, Standard Chartered, UBS, Barclays, and another, you would begin to know that their rates differ and should be. It's all on the implied wall actually. Now the question is: even if I go with the Reuters rate at 7.75%, God knows what bank would be quoting and why bank would quote. Another thing which I wanted to ask from RBI, in every RFP, RFP stands for request for proposal. In every RFP, there is a rate or the benchmark rate which has been given. Example, today Infosys wanted to set up a delivery center in Bangalore and they wanted to buy chairs from Switzerland, assuming, or they wanted to buy computers from US, which covers desktops. They raise an RFP and they say they invite the companies like HP, Asia, Apple, and multiple companies, those who are the desktop producers, the leading desktop producers, to come and participate in that RFP request for proposal. And assuming that they have to give in the request for proposal that the minimum price which the basically the maximum price which we are expecting of the desktop is 1000 US dollars per piece considering this configuration. Now if the company will think that this configuration cannot be given in the 1000 dollars they will not participate and if the company feel that no we can give less than 1000 dollars 
$1,000 which Infosys is asking is too much. We can give in $950, we should participate. My question is why Reserve Bank of India issuing the request for proposal has not mentioned that this should be the three year premium that should be applicable on all the banks and all the banks those who are quoting more than that will get the business. Where is this benchmark price? When the three-year benchmark price is clearly mentioned on Reuters, mentioned on the Bloomberg, why are we not given this in that? Why are we are allowing banks to come and give their figures? Every RFP request for proposal is having one thing which is very clear. The company has to give the benchmark rate. Why this benchmark rate has not been given? Why are we creating the ambiguity in the system that banks has to come in the public domain and give their figures? God knows whose figure would be highest, whose figure would be lowest, but nobody knows. Nobody knows. This is our way. Another mistake is that for a minute we assume that, for a minute, we assume that banks are quoting 8.5 not percent, 8.5 rupees as a figure, then after three years, this cycle will reverse, RBI will pay back the dollars and basically get the rupee back. So RBI will pay back the dollars and get the rupee back. Boss, just imagine, just imagine, if the bank is giving, assuming 8.5 rupees, although there are many bankers who tend to believe that three year my four has fallen after that, if the bank would give you 8.5 after three years, what the bank would be making? Tell me, if you give 35,000 crores to bank, what bank would be making? What bank would be making? Do you expect bank to give you some, do you expect bank to earn some money? Interest rate in India has already fallen. It has reached to a level that the investment activity in India has reduced to the highest level. Like yesterday I was viewing one of the business channels in which the Central Monitoring and Indian Economy told us that the investment proposals which generally used to be 25 trillion Indian rupee, now it has reduced to 10 trillion Indian rupee. Now, Thing. The investment proposal which were at 25 trillion Indian rupee, now it is 10 trillion Indian rupee. It means considerable decline. What a bank would get out of this so called 35,000 crores and where did this so called 35,000 crore it means? You have converted this into 70, right? You converted this into 70. From where you will got that figure? Please have some common sense in place, you are, you are a central bank, right? Let's move further. The banks will give you 8.5. I know that the public sector bank treasuries are very, very timid in nature. They have no functional competency. How do the private banks do? What the private banks do? Private banks would take in a correspondent position in the market, which is known as non-deliverable market. Example: Chase India, HSBC India, Standard Chartered India. Uh, I would say, you know, Goldman Sachs and multiple. You would be thinking that why I did mention non-deliverable, why not non-deliverable forward? The reason being bank treasuries are intelligent. Bank will take up a position in multiple instrument example, non-deliverable forward, non-deliverable options, non-deliverable OIS, or maybe they will create a structure which I am not creating here because it's subject to consultancy, which is a parallel structure bank would be creating which is non-deliverable swap. If I would be working, I would be at the treasury of DBS, Standard Chartered, HSBC, JP Morgan Chase, I would be creating a parallel structure in the non-deliverable swap market. So what I would be doing, I am taking a swap position with RBI, I would be creating a parallel structure, for so example, I would, have, I would have Chase India here, and Chase India would be creating a parallel structure which is Chase Singapore. This is known as non-deliverable swap, but we are not here discussing that as it is subject to consultancy note. But anyways, there are multiple things on the way. Another thing is that when the banks, when the RBI will go to dollars here, RBI said this would increase the liability of the RBI. Of course, you have corrected that part. You give, you need, I need to say you are correct. And RBI is saying, this would impact one element which is 
NIIP. I would like to ask all those people, those who are watching this video, put a hand on your heart and just, just check with yourself, do you know the meaning of NIIP? It is Net International Investment Position. When was the last time any government of India, from the last 70 years, without entering into the political debate, whose government is better or whose government is not better, when was the last time any finance minister of India, any RBI governor, including the so-called Raghuram Rajan, ever insisted to publish NIIP, Net International Investment Position in India, which is nothing but the difference of FX assets minus FX liabilities. I think it's somewhere in 2007 I started my career. Since then, I know that it is more than 200 billion. NIIP is India is greater than 200 billion. But anyways, God knows the right figures. Then RBI will sell this dollar in the forward market slowly, slowly. It is nothing but sterilization. I wanted to ask from RBI, you are the most innovative central bank of the globe. One side, once you would be returning back, you would be asking because of course you would be converting this dollar into INR and generally you would be converting this dollar into INR on a spot basis. A little portion you will not take on the spot basis because you do a lot of open market operations or God knows you could replicate that with the open market operations. Then the cost of returning back is actually the POS cost, principal only stock cost has been passed on to the bank. So bank would be facing this cost and banks cannot cry because you know. But if you would be taking a forward position here, the premium component of the three years, so suppose RBI would like to pay INR to the bank. Suppose if I go with the RBI, which is 35,000 crores, RBI would like to give this figure from the open market operations which they are doing. And this dollar, this dollar they will sell slowly, slowly in the forward market. If they will sell slowly, slowly in the forward market, they would be getting the premium. And in whose pocket the premium came? RBI. Because when there is a time, so after 2022, when they need to give the premium, when they need to give the dollar back, they will get the premium from the bank. So ultimately, RBI is EPS neutral. But if it go with the 2013 and, and 2013 by Raghuram Rajan, here the POS cost was on RBI, and I think that was the only right decision he ever made when he decided to have POS cost on the RBI. Another biggest biggest catch which we have is there is that these catch. What would be the impact of that on the benchmark curve? God knows. What would be the impact on the treasury curve? God knows. What would be the impact on the repo window? I don't know. What would be the impact on the SLR window? I don't know. Last but not the least, what would be the impact on the OIS curve? Sitting today, we do not have a single bank, single bank report who will tell you the complete architecture like that. To wind up this all architecture, this is not a public sector bank, this is a foreign bank. They have the dollars. They are going to have a non-deliverable swap, which is a mere swap, which we are not discussing as it is subject to consultancy mode. Moreover, moreover, very carefully, the POS cost, the principal only swap cost is on the bank than on the RBI. Whether RBI, I'm sure, going to give the Indian rupee from open market operation and that they would be making money by selling the forward contract, getting the premium. But at the end of the day, there are multiple portions which are left as far as this swap is concerned. Few I said, few I'm going to be added number one. What would be the impact on benchmark? What would be the impact on repo window? What would be the impact on SLR? And last but not the least, what would be the impact on OIS curve? With this, Treasury Consulting would like to thank you very much and we absolutely believe that RBI is seriously an obsolete institution in the globe.
RBI do not know how to cover the foreign exchange and I think the capability of the RBI as a central bank to understand foreign exchange is pretty pretty limited in nature. They never look thing holistically or alternatively the bank who did suggest it then, he himself do not know how exactly the foreign exchange market works. I think such 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 type of swap architecture should not function as a buy sell swap. Reason being, the person who is paying the POS cost is that person. It is not that person. Had it been RBI now in 2013, it was a buy sell swap because the POS cost was on the RBI then on no not here. Now today the POS cost is here, and for RBI is not entitled to tell this is a buy sell swap, rather it's a sell buy swap. With this. Treasury Consulting would like to thank you very much. In case you have any question, you're welcome to visit. You give me a call at 9899242978. My email ID rabul.magan at the My platform is www.fixedincome.global. Thank you and lots of videos on the way. See you soon. Thank you.